let's talk about um, Hubei's new diagnosis method. Help us understand in layman term what exactly has changed. Can we safely say that this actually means that the threshold for what's considered a COVID-19 case is actually now lower? Yes, Glenda, that, that's quite true. Normally, when there's an outbreak of an infection, to get a confirmed case, we would not only want the clinical features, but we'd wa also want the uh, organism identified. So basically, they've gone back on that and they're just looking at clinical features and x-ray features. And the reason they're doing that, I believe, is because we think that so many cases have been missed. So they're trying to capture all those cases, but that is at the expense of specificity. So there may be people who've got X-ray changes and clinical features due to other infections, because you have to remember it's still winter in China and there are lots of other infections circulating. Well, there seems to be a huge jump in the number of cases. So if the number of deaths don't increase at the same pace, does that actually mean a lower mortality rate? You know, basically, does it mean that COVID-19 is less lethal? That's right. If the number of uh, cases increases at a certain rate and the number of deaths is at a lower rate, it's, it, we, it means that the case fatality rate is lower. And that is what we've suspected with this organism, that even though we've talked about this 2% death rate, we've always thought there have been a lot of cases out there that have been missed and therefore the death rate would be lower. So, uh, but it, we were just starting to see the number of cases on a daily basis fall. But this, of course, even though it's trying to identify people and isolate them, will confuse the issue a little bit about how the, pan how the outbreak is going. That's right. So we've been hearing this week that the number of cases may actually peak in China um, sometime in April. And then there are some who disagree with this. And with this new surge in cases because of this new diagnosis method, how then will projections start to change? Right. So you're quite right. There are very clever people who've done very clever models, but coming up with, with uh, different answers. So I, I really still think we just have to wait and see. Uh, as I said, by trying to capture cases this way, then you're more likely to find cases and isolate them and treat them. But that is at the risk of also identifying people who might have flu or another cold virus who've got changes on an X-ray or a CAT scan. And of course, you run the risk of... Uh, isolating people with one virus with coronavirus and people getting mixed infections. So there's a risk there as well. So it's a bit of a, it's an interesting time in the next few days and weeks. You mentioned there uh, a, a mistaken case of a flu and um, COVID-19, but from a disease management perspective, do you think it's actually quite useful for authorities to um, contain possible COVID-19 cases with this new diagnosis though? Oh, absolutely. All I'm saying is that if you have, uh, if you're containing those people with uh, COVID-19, and but you also have people in there who've got uh, an infectious history and changes on a CAT scan, but due to another virus, you might start spreading different viruses amongst this group of people who are hospitalised.